All right, welcome back again. And so by now you should at the very least have been able to go and tap this and then back up and then execute a really nice turn. And then you'd probably be able to, we could just repeat that pattern. So we could take the same thing, copy and paste this part here, and then we put it here. So then this section here would be uh, the uh, drive forward to do the second wall. And then we'd have to take the um, stop, uh, or this would be stop at the wall, so here, and the reversing, and the stopping, and the turning, all of that, and this, all of that happens again, because we reverse, we stop, we reverse, we turn, but this time we turn in the other direction. So that means that this should be reverse. And this should be forward. But everything else is the same. So this should actually give us our two walls, basically. So you drive forward. Here we go bump, back up, turn, drive forward again, and I got the angle a little bit wrong, but I didn't use, I'm not using rotations, I'm using sleep, so the angles are gonna be kinda off, and then turn again. So that, you could just repeat that process and get it all good, but <laughs> there's so much repeated code. And so a long time ago, programmers came up with a technique called a function. And that basically allows you to make like a mini program inside your program. And that mini program can have um, multiple lines of code in it that you can then execute many times, basically as many times as you want. Now the first easiest program that we can make is uh, like as a function is we could make a stop function. And there is some special syntax for making functions. It's kind of like making a loop it's kind of like, it's going to look basically like this. This is a function. And so we want our function to make it stop. Let's do that. So our first function is just going to be called stop. We don't need to return anything. So we just say void. And then we give it a name called like stop motors. And then we can pass in the amount of time. So we'd say, uh, um, int. Uh, stop time ms, which means the amount of milliseconds that you want to stop. And then in here, we're going to have, uh, we can just copy this code, put it here, but I'm going to change this to sleep ms, or like this, I guess, and then stop time ms is going to go in. So basically how this works is this function is its name is called stop motors. Okay. And it has a stop time variable and that stop time MS variable uh, is used by the sleep MS function. So we, this variable gets passed into here and then it gets used by both. Um, so that's the basics. So how do we use this? Well, what I do is I take this name, stop motors, and I, instead where it says stop at the wall, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this, and I'm just gonna say stop motors. And we know it says star, it's a function. Okay, so stop motors, and then we pass in the variable. So in here, we would pass in the amount of time that we wanted to stop. And in this case, I'm just gonna go 10 milliseconds, semicolon, and that's it. So now I'm gonna test it to make sure it works. So this is the first time it stops, it should do this. So we go, do, 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 and it bumps, and it works. So, now I know that I can take um, 
this, and anytime I use the stop function, I can actually replace it with the stop motors function. But it would depend on how much I want it to, to stop for. So in here, this one would be um, 1,000, because that's one second. And then this one would also be 1,000. And then this one would be 10. This one, 1,000. And this one, 1,000. So now we've just reduced our code by quite a lot, probably about um, 10, 15 lines of code we've simplified. So that is really handy. And let's test it one more time. And there, that's looking pretty good. The stop seems to be working. The timing seems to be pretty much the same as it was before. There we go. So now that we have the stop motors function and we know how to make functions, I want you to pause the video and I want you to see if you can find a way to make another function, make a function for something else, maybe something else that you think would be good. So I'm going to pause the video right now and try to make a function. All right. Now, hopefully you paused it and didn't just sit there waiting for me to keep talking. Um, but if you're ready, um, what function should we make? And what function did you make? Well, I am thinking that probably uh, the turn would be a handy function. So like the spinning to make it turn left or right, we could actually have that be a function. So what we could do is we could have up here, we could have another function called void turn um, robot. And then the question is, what kind of parameters should it have? Well, um, we'd have to think of what turning needs. It needs a direction type and it needs a um, speed. So we could actually make a left turn and a right turn if we wanted to, or we could make um, basically just like one function for both. Uh, depends on what you want to do. I'll let's make let's just practice making functions. So let's let's actually make like a left turn. Let's make a turn left, and let's make a turn right because that's just it's just fun. So turn left. And right and then it's a lot easier to use for someone even if they're not a coder they could sit down and look at your program and they'd understand what's going on so we have the turn left and the first turn is actually a right turn this second turn is a left turn so we can actually copy this code pretty much exactly as it is and just paste it in here this is our turn left and then um, we can assume that usually there's going to be stop afterwards, but we can just have the stop separately. And then we know that uh, this is the right turn. So we can take that. And you notice that I'm not writing code that I don't need to write. If I can copy and paste and move it, I'm going to do that. Um, so you have turn left, left motor dot spin, um, reverse, and right motor dot spin forward and then turn right is left motor dot spin forward and right motor dot spin reverse and I'm gonna just con make it consistent just because it's bothering me it's not the same it it's usually depending on how you have it set up you can you don't have to use this but this is fine so now we have turn left and we have turn right now do they need any parameters well I mean I guess we could have the speed so we'd have um, an integer Speed. And then that could be that speed then gets put into the where the 11 is. So then if I wanted some of the turns to be faster or slower, I could do that. So now we take the turn left and we put that 
into, we know that the last one is a turn left, so we get rid of this, turn left, and then we have the speed, let's keep it at 11 for now. And then we add a turn right, which is gonna be there. That's the one we wrote, so then we're gonna put it here, turn right. Also 11. So now we have turning and stopping are both being controlled by functions. So hopefully, didn't make any mistakes. And let's see how that behaves. So we run it. Bump, turn. Aha, it still turns. And then it's going to go, it's going to bump, turn, good. You know, you'll notice that when it collides with the wall, sometimes it slips a little bit and misses its alignment. And that is the flaw of this sensor. Uh, if you use the ultrasonic sensor, it will actually never actually physically touch the walls. So then it's a bit easier to get it more precise. But the code is a bit more complicated to detect the sensor. Um, not by much, but still, either way works. So that's the um, trick to this program is basically to have functions to organize your code. Now, I'm going to stop the video for now. And the next video, I'll show you how to write the function for the um, sensor drive. And then those are all the functions that you need for this program. All right, and maybe uh, you could try writing it yourself first. See if you can figure out how to write the one for the drive code. And then uh, you can check out the video to find out the answer. All right, thanks for watching.